Hello learners, welcome back. How are you all today? I hope you all are healthy and happy. Hmm, you all must be wondering why I have covered my eyes. And also, I'm going to use only one hand from now onwards. So, these two things that I have devised for this particular class is an experiment. Yesterday, I read a story about Mrs. Bean's school. It was not an ordinary school, a different kind of school, rather a special one. And she used certain methods to make her students more thoughtful. So why not try it for myself? Let me first take your attendance. Oh no, it is very difficult to do anything with my eyes closed and with only one hand. Let me first remove this cloth. It is very difficult for me to do anything with just one hand and my eyes covered. So students, you learn if we lose any of our five senses, it is very difficult for us to do anything. Today, we are going to study a similar kind of story, a story about a special kind of school. So, let us read the story first. A different kind of school, written by E. V. Lucas. E. V. Lucas was born on 12th June 1868 and died on 26 June 1938. He was an English humorist, essayist, playwright, biographer, publisher, poet, novelist, short story writer and editor. The story, A Different Kind of School, addresses an important social concern. It sensitizes our children about differently able students. Its aim is to make our children appreciate and understand somebody's misfortune and encourage them to provide help. In this school, each term, every child has to play different types of game like one blind day, one lame day, one deaf day, one dumb day and one injured day. Let us now read the story. I had heard a great deal about Miss Beam's school, but not till last week did the chance come to visit it. When I arrived there was no one in the sight, but a girl of about twelve. Her eyes were covered with a bandage and she was being led carefully between the flower beds by a little boy who was about four years younger. She stopped and it looked like she asked him who had come. He seemed to be describing me to her. Then they passed on. Miss B was all that I had expected. Middle-aged, full of authority, yet kindly and understanding. Her hair was beginning to turn grey and she had the kind of plump figure that is likely to be comforting to a homesick child. I asked her some questions about her teaching method which I had heard were simple. No more than is needed to help them to learn how to do things. Simple spelling, adding, subtracting, multiplying and writing. The rest is done by reading to them and by interesting talks during which they have to sit still and keep their hands quiet. There are practically no other lessons. The real aim of this school is not so much to teach thought as to teach thoughtfulness, kindness to others and being responsible citizens. Look out of the window a minute, will you? I went to the window 
which overlooked a large garden and a playground at the back what do you see miss bean asked i see some very beautiful grounds i said and a lot of jolly children it pains me though to see that they are not all so healthy and active looking when i came in i saw one poor little girl being led about she has some trouble with her eyes now i can see two more with the same difficulty and there's a girl with a crutch watching the others at play she seems to be a hopeless cripple miss bean laughed oh no she said she is not really lame this is only her lame day the others are not blind either it is only their blind day i must have looked very surprised for she laughed again this is a very important part of our system to make our children appreciate and understand misfortune we make them share in misfortune too each term every child has one blind day one lame day one deaf day one injured day and one dumb day during the blind day their eyes are bandaged absolutely and they are on their honor not to peep the bandage is put on overnight so they wake blind this means that they need help with everything other children are given the duty of helping them and leading them about they all learn so much this way both the blind and the helpers there is no misery about it miss bean continued everyone is very kind and it is really something of a game before the day is over though even the most thoughtless child realizes what misfortune is the blind day is of course really the worst but some of the children tell me that the dumb day is the most difficult we cannot bandage the children's mouth so they really have to exercise their will power come into the garden and see for yourself how the children feel about it miss bean led me to one of the bandaged girls here's a gentleman come to talk to you said miss b and left us don't you ever peep i asked the girl oh no she exclaimed that would be cheating but i had no idea it was so awful to be blind you can't see a thing you feel you are going to be hit by something every moment it's such a relief just to sit down are your helpers kind to you i asked fairly but they are not as careful as i shall be when it is my turn those that have been blind already are the best helpers it's perfectly ghastly not to see i wish you would try shall i lead you anywhere i asked oh yes she said let's go for a little walk only you must tell me about things i shall be so glad when today is over the other bad days can't be half as bad as this 
having a leg tied up and hopping about on a crutch is almost fun i guess having an arm tied up is a bit more troublesome because you can't eat without help and things like that i don't think i will mind being deaf for a day at least not much but being blind is so frightening my head aches all the time just from worrying that i will get hurt where are we now in the playground i said we are walking towards the house miss beam is walking up and down the garden with a tall girl what is the girl wearing my little friend asked a blue cotton skirt and a pink blouse i think it's milly she said what color is her hair very light i said yes that's milly she is the head girl there's an old man tying up roses i said yes that's peter he's the gardener he's hundreds of years old and here comes a girl with curly red hair she's on crutches that's anita she said and so we walked on gradually i discovered that i was 10 times more thoughtful than i ever thought i could be i also realized that if i had to describe people and things to someone else it made them more interesting to me when i finally had to leave i told miss beam that i was very sorry to go and so we walked on gradually i discovered that i was 10 times more thoughtful than i ever thought i could be i also realized that if i had to describe people and things to someone else it made them more interesting to me when i finally had to leave i told miss beam that i was very sorry to go ah she replied then there is something in my system after all so students this lesson is a message about how doing simple things can make learning more interesting and easier learning while doing is the best way to learn different things moreover other than learning routine things we need to make ourselves aware and concerned about our environment and its problems the lesson make us think how we can make our children more responsible and aware citizens in the story the narrator had heard a lot of good things about miss beam and her school miss beam was known for using simple teaching methods in a perfect way thus our narrator visited the school to find out about the interesting methods so our narrator visited the school he posed some questions to the teacher she told him that she taught nothing special but simple calculation and writing few things were read to them the main objective and aim of the school was to make students more thoughtful and responsible citizens on miss beam's request the narrator looked out of the window and observed that the school garden was beautifully maintained and 
there was a girl with crutch and two girls with bandage on their eyes he thought they were blind and the other was lame but miss bean explained that the school observes one blind one lame one deaf one injured and one dumb day for every child in a term these activities make the children more thoughtful and concerned on the blind day eyes of one child are bandaged and other children are expected to help the blind this game became a great learning for both the blind and the helpers thereafter miss bean took the narrator to one of the bandaged girls thereafter miss bean took the narrator to one of the bandaged girls the girls shared her feelings and learning with him she told him that she fears getting hurt all the time and this feeling was the most painful one after this experience the narrator realized that he had also developed a concerned attitude toward the differently abled people he told miss bean that he was sorry to leave her school she felt happy to know that the system in her school was good and her teaching style and way of imparting values did make a difference so students let us now revise the story in the story we learned that they observe one blind day every term during the blind day the bandage is put on by a child overnight so they wake blind this means that they need help with everything they do during the blind day their eyes are bandaged absolutely and they are on their honor not to peep other students are given the duty of helping them and leading them about they all learn so much this way both the blind and the helpers thus even the thoughtless student realize about the misfortune of others next we read that the school observes one lame day and one dumb day on lame day students took the lame day as a very funny day students tied each other's legs and then hopped in the school hopping on a crutch was almost fun for them sometimes an arm was tied up but it was more troublesome as one cannot eat without help dumb day this day was known as speechless day students did not have to speak a single word they really had to exercise their will power some students felt that this day was the most difficult day because they could not put bandage on their mouth then we see how the girl with the bandage on identified the head girl at the playground with the help of our narrator's description miss bean led narrator to one of the bandaged girl here is a gentleman who wants to talk to you said miss bean and left the narrator with the girl next when informed about a girl's appearance who wore blue cotton skirt and pink blouse and her hair color was very light bandaged girl recognized the girl her name was milly and she was the head girl next we see the identification of an old gardener by the bandaged girl with the help of our narrator's 
description. There was an old man who was tying up roses. The bandaged girl identified him as a gardener who was a hundred year old man. Next we see the identification of a curly haired girl on crutches by the bandaged girl with the help of the description provided by our narrator. There was a girl with curly red hair. She was on crutches. The bandaged girl identified her as Anita. From the story, we also learned that learning while doing is the best way to learn different things. So students, I hope you must have learned something from the story. Please try and incorporate the teachings of the story in your real life. Now, as your homework, I have an activity for you. As on the screen, you all can see there are two columns. First column is being titled The Child Must and the second column is titled The Child Must Not. Children, you are supposed to write or mention the things that you feel a child must do and in the second column the things a child must not. For example, I have written in the first column as children you can see there are two columns. In the first column we have to mention all the activities that a child must do and in the second column you have to mention the activities the child must not do. For example, in the first column I have already written the child must obey his or her parents. Similarly, in the second column I have written the child must not be late for school. So, similarly you have to fill these two columns with the things that the child must do and the child must not. And I want you people to write a letter to your teachers. In the letter, you can mention anything that you like. You can ask your teacher some personal questions as well. So, you all are free to write the letter. If you like, you can write the letter to me as well. So, students, I also want you to write letter to your teachers. You can address the letter to your teacher asking them about their well-being. You can ask any question that you like or you can tell them anything that you want. With this, I conclude today's class. Thank you very much.